My Hensight Bowls have helped me achieve my greatest dreams, one of the most special being a gold medal at the Commonwealth Games. No matter where I am in the world, my Hensight Bowls suit any surface and feel comfortable in the hand. The Terrelgan Bowls Club. Amazing food for you and your family. Function rooms for celebrating with your friends. Corporate spaces for meetings and conferences. With special benefits for members, visit us today at the Terrelgan Bowls Club. More than just a bowls club. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Hence a Lot Victorian Open for 2023. My name's Tony Sherwell. Very pleased to be bringing you some women's pairs sectional matches here. This is day five of the Victorian Open. And to do that with me is the one and only Josh Thornton. Morning, Josh. Morning, Tony. No, it should be good. Obviously, we've had a cracking couple of days at Morwell with the uh, the triples. And we got, got down to the final now on both of those events. And uh, now we're starting the sectional play of the pairs. And should have a good match here first up. Uh, we have Sarah Braybrook and Ann Draffin, who we saw the other morning uh, day with the triples they, yep. they joined us in the live stream then and they are playing Ronell Richards or Ronnie as I uh, I met her last night in Zambrero's tone you know and uh, <laughs> she was really excited about, oh I'm on the live stream and I said oh I'm commentating you you know so and she's playing with um, Terrelgan's very own Ange Hackett so um, who did some commentary for us the other day as well so. yes yes and tidbit about how they joined up to play each other they actually played against each other in the Australian indoor singles there not long ago and decided they'd pair up and play together in this yeah, two very nice people, as are their opponents, Sarah Braybrook and Andrew Ruffin. So expect a match of a good bit of fun, but more importantly, a very high standard. We see Sarah Braybrook. This is N1, by the way. Sarah Braybrook's put her first one as a little resting toucher. Next one just in slightly behind. It is, of course, three bowl pairs. 15 ends, JT, a two and a quarter hour time limit. Not necessarily expecting to get to the time limit. We haven't really pushed it to this point so far. Of course, we're in the beautiful facilities here at Trelgan Bowls Club, indoor. Matches going on on the outdoor greens. We've had a little bit of rain overnight, JT, about yep. eight or nine mil. So that'll slow things up out there. Maybe I was having a look behind us, Tone, and looking at the grass greens, and they're, they're probably running probably closer to 12 or 13, I reckon, based off what I'm seeing out there. And um, I reckon this carpet, from what I gather, and doing a little bit of intel, is running around 14, 14 and a half. Yep. So um, as... Ronnie comes down, not a bad bowl there. Uh, Sarah started off well. Uh, Sarah is using Green Master Premiers. Ronnie is using Dreamline XG. And the two skippers are both using Aero Evolve. Yeah, a bit of a mixture all round. Mm -hmm. So the white bowls of Ronnie Richards, the darker sort of purple bowls, Sarah Braybrook. Thankfully for the commentators, Ange Hackett's also using a whitish bowl. So it's effectively white bowls versus blue and yellow. And Draffin, a former Vic Open winner. Playing former at State a, Bowler of the Year. Yeah, playing out of Belan. Former MCC player. Yes. As you say, back to Belan. I'm pretty sure they won the Premiership this year. Represented her country in short mat bowls as well. And Draffin, very, very talented bowler. Sarah's from Web Connor. Now, Sarah hasn't, to my mind, really burst onto the scene in the last year or two. But before that, I wasn't aware too much of her exploits. But what I've seen in the last year or two, been very impressed. Good bowl there by Ange Hackett. Um, she's probably still two or three down, but um, she's... Given herself a chance by hitting the pack and sort of splitting it open a little bit. I reckon she might be only one down, JT. We'll you see reckon? from this next camera angle, but uh, your eyes are always better than mine, so. It's definitely two, if not three. Yeah, you're probably right, it is two. <laughs> I thought I was a chance at getting JT to. Now it could be might four. Be two now. <laughs> <laughs> that might be three now. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be changing the shot. I like the shot that Ange played just then. Uh, to me, it's a wide target. Um, anything, nothing for short in, in the circumstances. Just trying to dead draw might be a little tough at this stage. Shane Edwards with some support for Ronnie. This is Jolene Lawkins. Nice to have you supporting the players in the chat.
The one thing about that last bowl is that they do now have the backer spell, so if Ange does want to attack it, there's every chance that if it happens to kill, she's got, got the spot now. The best back, yes. Um, but I know that I'm just watching Sarah and Anne converse here, and there's a bit of discussion around maybe putting one around the back anyway. Well, they're already holding three, so probably is time for a little bit of safety. The other option is drawing and getting one on the line and trying to take the run shot away as well. Or just add another one in. It's trying hard. So Anne's just doing a little finger measure here just to try and work out what the damage may be. Good morning, Noreen. I hope you're well. Sun just... Poking out out the back here too, so that'll dry the greens up a little. Fantastic facility here, Terelgan Bowls Club. Indoor synthetic and outdoor synthetic and two grass greens. It's changed since I was last here, Tone. I was back here in 2018 at the Terelgan Classic Triples. And um, it was just an outdoor synthetic and three grass greens back then. Yep. So uh, amazing changes in five years for the club. Yeah, the link from the bistro and the sports bar area through to the... Indoor bowling green is fantastic. Really is one of the world class facilities here, Terelgan Bowls Club. <sighs> Look, I hate to anticipate too early because you're just not sure how each player plays, but I mean, to me, to shot still looks like some sort of weighted shot, giving it a chance. Yep. Just a little bit of purpose. Needs to drop now. Just going to find a gap, so no change. We'll get players to confirm whether this is three. It's definitely three. Oh, sorry, three only, I should say, yes. Yeah, the measure's coming out, Tane. I might have been right with the four call. It's not often you're wrong. <laughs> Just ask me. <laughs> Morning, Mickey West. Can I have your email, mate? I shall chase that up. Get back to you ASAP. That's four. Hang on, this is their closest. So they'll come in now. That's the one I reckon for. It is. JT scores one. In the tally of who's the most correct. We're going to change that commentator's battle there, Brad, and just make sure we put Tony's name and just put minus whatever. <laughs> Surely I can't go into minus, can I? <laughs> so some other matches on here which we'll be able to give you some scores on. We've got Harris v. Pierce, Potter v. Truen, Tyres v. Edwards, Gallo v. Cheney, and Smythe v. Neville. So if you can get down this way, what are we, about an hour and a half east of Melbourne? If you can get down this way, you'll see some great bowls on today. We've got four greens of women's pairs here today. We've got men's pairs at Terelga. We're actually using about 14 or 15 clubs today. Correct, yep. In sectional play. Everywhere out, Sale, Hayfield, Mafra. And then back in the other way towards town, Maui, Newborough. And if you'd know one of your teammates is down here playing or you know someone from your club you know get on the Vols Victoria fa uh, website or the Vic Open page there's all the fixtures all the results and you can find them there so yep yeah spot on Sarah she uh, did have pink bowls but her and uh, Brenton both moved to white aero evolves well when would that be we had them in a the mixed pairs at the last Vic Open so I'll say about six months ago thereabouts I think it might have been when they made the change to Terrelgan Bowls Club um, given they've come from grass to synthetic, so it was good in a mixed pairs match to see both using identical bowls. Might not have helped them. I think they might have picked up the <laughs> their partner's bowls a couple of times, but certainly helped us. Talking about divorce pairs, Tony. <laughs> it generally is. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. It's actually a really good feeling here on uh, Friday and Saturday throughout the mixed pairs competition.
some good partnerships that were put together just as friends and you know looking for a male or a female to join them great opportunity to meet new people and that's one of the best things about our game correct absolutely and a carnival like a Vic Open is is the perfect setting for that we'll be back here in March again next year JT so anybody who's perhaps sitting at home going oh why am I not there you will get your opportunity in March next year roughly the same time slot using the same clubs and uh, if this year's anything to go by it's been a terrific success no one's really nailed it yet. Sarah's probably holding two or three here, but um, there's still plenty of room for any of the bowlers to really get one in there close. She may have been holding. She may not be now. Uh, it's definitely shot that one. Draws a little high five from Ange. Smooth delivery on Andraffen. Correct. No fuss, no nonsense. Just supreme touch. She's coming in nicely here too for Shark. Yep. I like... I'm going to show you a little bit of bias here, Tone, but the fact that Ange and Brendan come to this club and started using Evolve puts me in good stead if I actually am lucky enough to put a bowl down on this green during this event. I know I've brought my Evolves down with me, so... Well played, Ange Hackett. If you can use them like her, JT, you'll be in good nick. Just shoots through Andraffen's bowl, holding two. Yep. Yeah, it should be, JD. We're missing you here next year. Draft just going to get the wrong side, so no real change. It does flatten out. Ronnie Richards' bowl. Doesn't seem to be a wide turning here in that side. This looks pretty handy too, doesn't it, JT? Yeah. It's a bit of pressure. Oh, it just gets through a gap. <laughs> That's a bit stiff, I reckon. There wasn't a lot of gap there. It could have hit either of the bowls. It has inadvertently, though, split the three bowls of yeah. Ian and um, Sarah's up. So if there was any chance of trailing around the corner, it's taken that away a little bit. Yep. Again, Draffin will just try and draw this off. She might have found the same hole. Yeah, just cut it back. And Jackett's still holding one. So if she goes through that same gap again, it'll be pretty handy. Yes, she'll make three there. She does. She's marginally tied up. She's got good weight though, I reckon. Yeah. Well played, Anne Jackett. That's the two closest to the jack. Scores the two shots for those new to bowls. I'm not sure Brad Marin's new to bowls, though. He may not be, but I think he might be asking for anybody who might. But he's a giver, Brad Marin. It's a pretty simple game when you boil it all down that way, isn't it? Whoever gets closest to the jack gets one for every bowl that is. If it wasn't for having an opponent, it would be a very easy game. Probably the length of chosen here is probably the longest one we've played so far in the, the third end we're about to play, Tone. Yeah. Otherwise, they've probably been about medium to shorty lengths in so far. Yep. Left-hander, Ronnie Richards, the creative type. <laughs> talking that's the jack. Talking to a few of the ladies this morning. They feel like a long end on this green feels really long. 
I mean, it's looking like it's 38 to 40 metres, this green. So, a long end would be long. Sarah Braybrook just a touch short. She'll look to correct with her next. For those who are in the area, the Henselite stall over there was doing a roaring trade this morning. They've got some beautiful clothing, some shoes, bags, bowls, of course. All the accessories. Come down, have a chat, see what you might want to take home as a little souvenir of the Vic Open. Good leading there by Ronnie. Yeah, well played. Of course, sitting just next to them, JT, is AM Sportswear. Correct. Campbell Derrick will be there. He'll be able to talk to you about tournament wear or club wear. I have just decked out uh, the Murray Mallee Bowls region. Yeah, right. With brand new AM Sportswear gear. So new shirts, new caps, hoodies are coming, and even getting some cloths. So it is good stuff. Of course, they uh, kit out the Bowls Victorian State Team and the Big V. And uh, Trelgan Bowls Club moving to AM Sportswear as well. So they're providing great, great uniforms for clubs all across the country. Big presence here in Vic as Ronnie just loses that one. So Draft just telling Sierra Braybrook all you've got to do is pump or pass your own. Currently holding second shot. Played for Ballarat Highlands in the region sides last year, Sarah Braybrook. Yeah. Don't, oh, no, she, she, she <laughs> tipped both bowls out. <laughs> oh, I, I, that's actually quite unusual what happened there. <laughs> Such a fair game, isn't it? She thought, oh, I'll push mine, but I don't want to be a favouritism, so I'll push yours too. <laughs> Morning, Michael, from North Queensland. Lovely to have you watching. Nice to be able to provide some stream of some good bowls for you. Just my uh, three, four ends into this game, Tone, I feel like this surface, comparing it to Moore's, is a bit more forgiving. Yep. You know, um, is uh, you could I, I can see brilliant heads been set up. Um, if you miss your line, you, you're probably not going to get crucified, and that's nothing wrong with more more surface. There, that's a fantastic surface, nice and quick, but it's just a different type of surface. So yeah, you can see a head, a couple of rinks over, has four bowls within about a foot, and an Ange Hackett it's just, oh, might be just a whisker short. Great effort, nonetheless. Yeah, Morwell has two greens there. Uh, one that runs at about 14, 14 and a half, and another one that runs about 16 and a half, which has a good bit of turn on it. Yes. We had a good game on that the other night, you and I, JT. Yeah, for those who weren't listening yesterday, we uh, reminded everybody that we give Jimmy and Matty uh, a fair dinkum hiding. We sure and, did. And what was more impressive is the tone that you give Matty a hiding, and you're not a bowler, really, and Matty's meant to be. We should have left the cameras on for that one, I reckon. I've seen some tears from Jimmy at the end. Yeah, Margaret, the Grovers uh, infiltrated this tournament very well. You see the Ocean Grove uniforms everywhere. Good on them. They all, I, yesterday, in particular, when we streamed uh, the three guys and the triples, um, there was Grovers uniform everywhere supporting them in that match. Another nice good ball by here from Ann Jackets. Definitely two. There we go. Confirmed from Sarah Braybrook. I was about to argue with you, but I'm not going <laughs> to argue with Sarah Braybrook. It's not that I necessarily thought you were wrong. I just like having a little argument with you. You haven't won any yet. No, I know. But one day I will. Bit yeah, of weight. Graffin. Bit of positivity. Oh, well, funny enough, it's kind of Anne's bowl that came across, gone into one of Sarah's bowls and kind of bounced backwards a little bit. I still think it's two. I reckon it's three just because I want to argue with you. 
How is it not three? Well, I still think the original bowl of Sarah's there, the purple bowl, was the one that was beating one of the white bowls anyway, and that hasn't moved. Well, now I feel like I'm arguing with you and Sarah Braybrook. Now I feel bad. <laughs> See what happens. Both skippers with one bowl to come. Morning, Brendan. Yeah, we've got some good matches scheduled for today, that's for sure. And this one's going to be an absolute peach to start with. Andrew Affen wants to come down and have a look. I think she's perhaps thinking what I'm thinking, that it's three and not two. She wants to argue with you and Sarah Braybrook as well. <laughs> All righty. <okay. laughs> I, I, what I would say is I wouldn't change the shot she played. I actually like that shot. There's chances on the forehand. Get the gap, probably come through, get the jack, get the split. I don't feel like she can go any worse down. And if anything, if she happens to get her Sarah's bowl, which is the one I think is third shot on the high side or the wide side of it, it might split all three of those white out of the head, to be honest. Is there no value in trying to get Jack back? Well, that is what I was just saying. I did say that if she got the split down through the yep. middle between the two white ones, she'd get the Jack back and she'd have two or three as well. just depends on what weight she wants to play. But well, I feel like it's, it's she got can't go the same weight trying to get that split. So it's one or the other. She's going the same weight. It's close, she called. There we go. Yeah. Bang. Three, four shots. Touch went into the pit. She's kicked one out of bounds, which would have been another. So that would be three. Sort of surveying the head here to see if it could be four. That yellow one stayed in two. Yeah, could so be it's chance. Got to be one in the ditch and two on the green, isn't it? Could be three on the green. Depends where the jack spat to. There we go. Calls for the umpire. Bobby Carlson, international technical official extraordinaire, will come out and tidy this one up. The closest one of Ange and Ronnie's is the white one next to the purple, right? So that's going to be yep. the one they'll be measuring. The purple in front of it's definitely counting. So is that one which they're grabbing. So there's definitely three, and that's whether the yellow one, this wide one on our screens here, beats that white one. So you can see the experience of Bobby Carlson coming out and immediately asking the players, which ones would you like me to measure? Well played, Bob Carlson. This is at least a two-person measure. <laughs> it's quite some distance. I miss what Ronnie just signalled there. Well, I can tell you it's definitely three. It's whether it's four or not. Four. There we go. So some big scores in this game, JT. Two fours already for the braybrook draffen combination. And really, they're in a little bit of trouble there, but Ann Draffen, good enough to play the shot. Played a perfect bowl. She did. Sarah Braybrook lays the Henselite mat. So scores from other rinks. Neville leading Smythe 3-1. Cheney leading Gallo 6-0. Edwards and Tyres are locked at two shots apiece. Truen leading Potter 4-2. And Harris leading Pierce to zip. Of course, on our streamed rink here, the scoreboard yet to be updated in-house, but on our screen, it is correct, it is 8-2. Lead to Andraffen over Ange Hackett so far. Sarah Braybrook immediately puts a bit of pressure on. Rush of blood there from Ronnie Richards. I think it'll stay, stay up. Stay on. It's be close. You just never know. It might come in handy. It is. So. There you go. And gives it a big smile and a thumbs up. And 
Sarah. Just sneaks past the jack. Beautiful ball. Another good bubble here by Sarah. Yeah, pretty good set. And you're asking for a metre off her last. Ronnie well, certainly found the line. It's all on a speed now, Tone, because the line's good again. One rink over, just about to roll a jack, and the skipper was standing on the wrong line. <laughs> so the lead sort of signal, can you, can you just move over a bit? <laughs> Another counter for me in there. Four at this stage, but still room for Ange to cut it back. It's looking all right here, Tone. It's definitely going to cut one out. Say three still. Giving up on arguing with you. Smart move. looking at Angel's looking at it so it must be better just got to get down now well do we see a option at the back holding three the and problem's open. gonna probably provide a bit of cover to that the only thing I say though Tone is it's not an obvious head to attack to get the jack back so it would take a really exceptional bowl um, yeah, see a Braybrook clapping this one already. The, the more danger is actually if Ange plays a yard away and gets the jack just past the purple down to yep. the two white balls. That's probably where I would have been covering, but um, I think sometimes a lot of players, and I, I, I tend to do it myself at times, is that you go and take the easy option and take the, the, the easy security out by going the back and make them play the harder shot then. Which makes sense on the percentages. I still remember a Falls match at Warrnambool. It was a state championship said a couple of years ago, Tone. We held a number with the two ends ago. We would have hit the front holding that number. Hang on, we better call this bowl in first. I think it might be a little bit narrow, JT. I'd say that's four again. I'm going to say it's three. <laughs> really thought that was my opportunity. Makes it 12-2, and we're about to play the 15. So what I was saying is... Sub myself out of commentary <laughs> in a minute, the way I'm going. Um, 
we were holding a number. We would have hit the front with that number. The there was danger at the back. So I took what I thought the percentage shot was to cover the back, make sure he, he wouldn't play quick, quick. And it backfired on me because he come down and played the quick, quick bowl, but only thinned the jack and it moved it about two yards and dropped a four or five myself and couldn't win the game from there. Yes. Got to think of all the possibilities in this game. Morning, Michael O'Brien. Sean has asked a question. Has Jimmy recruited me to play at Melbourne? I reckon Jimmy might not be playing at Melbourne. Jimmy's got no power at Melbourne either. Yeah. Got no power anywhere. <laughs> when he gets on the commentary, he makes that he has. I don't know. He's going to come in here steaming when he comes back. Talk about going over and above. We've got a couple of the uh, Team USA ladies here who have arrived at the wrong venue. So Jimmy's just driven them down to Trafalgar. <laughs> where he is this morning. I still don't know where that exactly is. How far that is that away? Uh, half an hour. Ah, it's not too bad. No, not too bad. On the road, back to town. Nice little part of the world. I'm glad he did it, because I'm not sure I could have done it, Tane, because I've got two car seats in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Good starter again from Sarah. Yeah, she just applies the pressure straight away, doesn't she? The real issue here for Ronnie and Ange is when they're dropping ends, they're dropping fours. It's unusual scoring. I don't think I've ever seen three consecutive fours scored by one team in a match. No. Not that I can recall anyway. Maybe ones and twos is more common, but not fours. Well, there might be a bit of that going on over on uh, rink two over there. Cheney mm. leading Gallo nine zip after three ends. So three threes. Could be three threes. Oh, Ronnie. Close. Such a good effort. Didn't mind the idea, though. The yeah. Sarah's bowls are sitting, again, wide. They're sort of jack-high targets. Giving the bowl a chance. Morning, Vivian. Sarah Braybrook can do no wrong. Target is there. Does Ronnie want to have a crack? Now, if I was in, I'd be sort of playing a bowl where you're trying to turn your own and change the head up, making it less obvious to hit. And if you happen to miss, you, you're passing and finishing in a good home. Beautiful sunshine down here, Bradley Marin. Get the kite out. Not I'm not sure the kite would go well today because to it doesn't seem to be a lot of wind, though. No, you might have to run along in front of it. But it'll be a nice day nonetheless. Brad is a fitness guru, though, so he'd be able to you know, get that jog up and get the kite going. He is very fit. It's beautiful in here under the roof, though. I'll give you the hot tip. No kites in here. Oh, well. It'll be a result of sorts. Takes one out after collecting a bit of front traffic. It's it was the right shot. She wasn't far away, but it's now narrowed the target for 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 Ange and uh, Ronnie now. And Ange's about to draw another one by the looks of things. And Ange may have sort of widened the target again, so. Well, the shot can't be forehand anymore. It's nearly going to be backhand. All right, switching to the backhand draw. What about effort here, JT? Speed is looking good. 
Not a bad effort here, JT. <laughs> Great ball yeah, by Ange. It's a little hat raise. Oh, there you go. Fantastic. Would that be the spark they need? And Raffin will be having something to say about that, though. Should be looking just to arrive, sort of foot or two away. Looking to sit the bowl, bit of jack movement. She's not far away. Goodness me. Oh, this might just. Oh. Yeah. Ronnie and Ange have definitely got one. Here's the question about Ange. She's going to come down and have a look, and I think this is a good move. Because there is a bit of danger here, depending on... Mm. She finally gets one. She does not want to give it away. Draw back in. Make sure if you're going to be anything, be short and wide. If you get to the purple bowl and flop in, you definitely got shot. Sounds quite easy when you say it like that, Tane. It does. It's a very easy game from the sidelines. You, you never play a bad bowl from over here. No. I've never missed once. So we'll see if your predictions are correct. It's got the right trajectory to add another. It's all on the speed now. Does it have the legs? It's a cautious approach. I don't. I don't yeah, mind it. Not a bad thing. Get the one. Reset. I'd be discussing what length we want to play, tactics. To even a little team meeting right now wouldn't hurt, you know? Yeah. So 12 3 at trailing. We played five ends in this match. Some scores from other rinks on rink one Smythe v Neville. Smythe now trailing 3 7 after five. Julia Gallows on the board against Karen Cheney. She trails 2 9 after four. Tyres and Edwards are locked at three shots apiece after four ends. And Potter is trailing Truen 3-5 after five. On the very rink next door, singles everywhere. Harris is on two, Pierce on one. And they've played three ends. With that, JT, I will leave you in commentary and uh, enjoy the rest of the game. I'm sure it's going to be a cracker. Cheers, Tony. Look forward Thank to commentating more later in the day. Thank you for joining us. And as Tony vacates the chair... We're going to be welcomed by one of our newest staff members at Bowls Victoria. He's been around for a few months now, but he hasn't had the opportunity to jump on the live stream yet. It's Campbell Hymans, our participation coordinator. Welcome, Campbell. Perfect. Thank you, JT. Thank you. Honoured to be here. It's taken a bit of time to get <laughs> onto the scene, but we're here eventually, which is good. No, it's fantastic. How are you finding the game? Obviously, your first time commentating on live stream, correct? Yeah, first time. Um, obviously, doing a live stream. So, the quality of bowls so far has been oh, somewhat unbelievable, to be honest. Um, yeah, so it'll be good seeing what it's all about. Um, hopefully, the game is gets a bit closer. Well, look, that's what we hope for from a viewing uh, perspective. Um, we always want a close game if we can. Um, Sometimes you don't get it as you'd like, but, uh, you know, but the reality is even though Ronnie and Ange, uh, you know, who are currently, you know, not, not winning in 12-3 down, they're actually playing some good bowls, but the, the hard part from their perspective is that Sarah and Ange Raffin are playing exceptionally well themselves, you know, and that's, that's, the, that's been the difference so far. For, so. Sure, for sure. I was, from viewing it, the score actually doesn't reflect the quality of bowls. It's really been a really high-quality game. Um, so hopefully they get a few back on the end and start to put some scoreboard pressure on. Well, they won the last game, which means, they've again, they've tactically changed it up a little bit. They've gone a bit longer, which I, I like from uh, from, from uh, where I'm sitting in terms of trying to change it up a little bit. And now it's just a matter of building some momentum. And sometimes it might be just one and end for a few ends that gets you going. And then if you edge that a little bit closer, be patient. Maybe that number might come where you get back into the game, you know, so... Definitely. It's those couple of fours that have just... The heads don't look reflective to what the outcome is, but... Uh, well, they're probably stiff. The, one of those fours they dropped, <laughs> they actually had a good head, and Andrew Raffin played a fantastic run shot. And not only did she get the jacked at the back, sort of 
screw through and all of a sudden after the wash up they all fall down you know so but, um now one of the reasons why we wanted to get you on the on the stream today was obviously one to give you that experience of having a, a commentate on a game but obviously give us a bit of background about yourself um, you joined Bowls Victoria in November. Yep, so, yeah, yep. that's correct. And tell us a little bit about your role as a participation coordinator. Now, I know your role because I once did it. Um, but for those listening at home, we'd, sure. lo we'd love to know what um, you know you do in your yeah, job. Yeah, no, that's it. Yes, yeah, so obviously um, into the role in November. Um, so ultimately my role covers a lot of the, obviously participation coordinator, which is obviously um, recruitment um, and a driver disability under 18s um yes yeah, so under 18 school sports so ssv primary school so that's up and running at the moment we have region finals going on um at the moment we have our state champs in may at sunbury so that will be a big day out we've had some terrific numbers so far um participating all over victoria um, and then it's also just increasing a couple more disability events which is i think is really drive for me um, seeing that there's so many disability um, bowlers out there and the participation to grow that sport grow that um, field as well which is something yeah. which Look, will be good as someone who's been playing the sport a while now I think I'm tinkering on about 29 years <laughs> I've always said our sport is the most inclusive sport out there and, I, and I'm, I'm passionate about it and you're right uh, in the this disability space you know there's not many sports where someone with a disability can go out and play with someone who doesn't have one, you know, and, and, and that's where we, we have a great offering as a sport, you know, so. Yeah, definitely. The point of difference in bowls, it's like anyone can play with anyone, unlike some other sports, but it's, I feel like, yeah, it's a, it's a hidden gem. It really is. Now, you've, you've had a dabble back in the day, correct, playing, is that right? Yeah, so funny, funny enough, I, um, I bowled, I started when I was about 15 or 16, um, just as you do with the grandparents on a night out and they said come along um, so I did um, and then yeah ever since then bowled at Armadale for about four to five years worked my way up as everyone does in the lower grades late f funny enough my debut game was I was just coming back from tennis and the selector says we need you I'm like I have no equipment so go to the grandma's house they have a top there for me um, <laughs> bowls and then yeah ever since then didn't look back um, and yeah, I'd love to get back on the green eventually. Good, good to hear. As we, uh, the, the leads have played their bowls. Anne's about to play her last bowl. Um, she's currently holding two, I reckon, so she'll be looking to add here. Um, Anne was looking to get down there. She had chances trying to land the bowls and, and or get the jack, and she, she sort of just missed on all of them, unfortunately. So it be interesting to see what the, the two it is. Two it is. it is. So they've, any momentum shift that, uh, Ronnie and Andrew looking at has uh, not gone the way they wanted to so far. Just got to capitalise on the on the leg that they haven't won. They got to get this one back. This I feel like this is an important end to get now. The idea is when you win one end, particularly when you're behind, you got to try and get a couple in a row, you know, and that, and then that puts a bit of a pressure back on the opposition as well. So. And I know, obviously, you, you touched on some of the things you do work on as a participation quarter, Campbell. Um, one of the things I've been working alongside you with of late is the SSV stuff. Um, we have a brilliant partnership with School Sport Victoria. And any school across the state that has a membership of School Sport Victoria can generally enter their competitions. And um, the one event that we run um, as a whole is the primary school competition, you know, and... Um, I'm obviously based up in the, the Murray Mallee and Wimmera with my job and uh, I, I help you out in terms of running the region finals in those areas and what I love is that the Compaspe, which is a division of the Lodden Mallee, generally gets around 20 schools I into the event. Absolutely. When I saw the when I sent <laughs> out the registration of the link, I thought, let's hope we get six and even number and then all <laughs> of a sudden we got to eight got to 10, started ringing the, the club saying, has there going to be enough space, enough bowls? Um, but I was, yeah, it was unbelievable having around 200 people, yep. 200 students. Um, and that's not the first year it's been like that. No. Last year was the same as well. We actually had it split over two venues last year. <laughs> that's, yeah, it was unbelievable. And there's been such a big growth of um, primary school students that mainly year fives, year six, you just 
you wouldn't expect are out there, but there's so many junior bowlers bowling, which is fantastic. What I love about that age, and I've always been very passionate about this, Campbell, is that grades five and six are still impressionable. They don't know what cool is yet. Yeah. And so if you, uh, and they generally love getting out and playing anything, Any which sport. means so if you offer them lawn bowls, they go out and have a crack. And if it's not not cool yet to play bowls, which you know we know that, that sometimes there's that perception. Um, you might actually hook them there and then, you know, and uh, I've always said that that age group's nearly the best age because they can hang on to a normal size bulb, albeit maybe a zero, you know, something small. Um, but I, I've always been a big believer that that's the age to target in terms of junior participation, and I think we do a good job in terms of what we offer in that space. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the numbers are growing. It's just getting them exposed to the sport early, and that's what we're doing, and the students are loving it. Ronnie's currently holding one here at the moment, um, and... Just swung her over to her back end. Uh, try and sort of get something close. Jack Aish. Um, at least another one in the head at the same time too. And it's not a bad finish. Whilst it's not another counter, it's it's in the vicinity of what Anne might do in terms of either trying to sit the bowl or turn the jack herself. So It's an open, it's an open head, so there's plenty of room for both skips to... Yeah, if you look at it, they've all got their line pretty much nailed, Campbell. Yeah, it's just the weight that they've now just got to adjust. So, have you had a chance to have any staff games yet, Campbell, in terms of putting <laughs> a bowl down? Because you may have heard on the commentary that there was one on uh, Sunday night, a bit of a battle between Tony and myself playing Jimmy and Maddie. And I don't mind saying it because I've known Tony a long time now. Tony's no good at the game, but yet Tony <laughs> and I absolutely destroyed him, you know, so... Well, that's why that's why I'm up here now. <laughs> they said we need a bit more of competitive spirits. I did practice a little bit yesterday Ooh. against Oscar and yeah, right, yeah. Um, had a good win. Yep. So I'm ready. And for those who are wondering, Oscar is our uh, intern slash work experience and Oscar is a gun bowler himself, Oscar Jones from Ballarat, <laughs> who plays at Yale for Footscray. So, yeah, I was, I mean, I'm coming in red hot form at right the out. moment. <laughs> well, well, we'll throw you Tony or Matty to play against for starters and see how you fare against those two, I reckon. There could be a big reality check. <laughs> Anne wasn't far away with her first. Uh, again, she's looking to either promote her own, just get under a round. There's chances there. She's going to hit. Ooh. Look at the screen, there's still chances for her. I know Angie is probably still playing forehand here, looking to split the yellow and purple bowl and try and get another one in the count, I reckon. Giving it a red hot chance here. She's on a good trajectory, it's all on her speed now. Ah, brilliant bowl, Angie really Hackett. Bowl. That's two. So looking at the head, obviously we're looking at Anne now talking with her, with Sarah, but there's a gap between the yellow on the centre line and the purple on the... Backhand. ..where Sarah's sort of saying. There's either a draw shot on which Sarah's are calling for. You could have actually went between the gap and tried to take the two white bowls out as well, so... Sarah's giving it... talking to the bowl. She's really... Really good line if it gets past. It's not far. Great bow, Great bow Andrew Raffin. Let's cut it back to one, I reckon, at this stage. So she shouldn't change anything from her first delivery here. It was an absolute pearler. So let's see if she can hold on to two shots. Currently holding one. All on Angel's speed now. I think she's just dropped it a little bit from the last one. One it is. So hopefully this is the run again. Hopefully they can go back to back. They well, they've, they've actually won three out of the seven ends. So that's not like you know, they're getting killed on how many ends they've won. Um, it was just the numbers. The you numbers. Know? Yep. Now, obviously, we touch on SSV, which is what you deal with as part of your role. Um, I know on the horizon is the State Disability Championships, and you're going to be running that event, correct? Yes, that's correct. Yes, so um, we are slightly changing the format this year. So um, we're 
doing the power of singles in classification. So we normally never had enough numbers to do that, Campbell. Normally we've had to combine. And for those who are wondering at home when we're talking about classification, if you're a, a, a bowler with a physical disability uh, and you're normally classified from either B8, which in layman's term is probably your least disabled, you know, well, um, and through to B5 where you might have a bit more of a significant disability. And um, from a Victorian State Championship perspective, we've always had to have basically everybody play together just from a numbers perspective. But now, uh, because we got good numbers this year, um, we're going to have a B5, B6 uh, State Championship yeah, as well as a B7, seven, B8. Eight, yep. Which is really positive. So allow more competitive games, not like they weren't previously, but it gives... Um, and it actually what it does, it actually replicates what we do at national level. Our national championships are played in those particular classifications as well too. So it'd be good to have you there. Yes, yeah, so those fixtures will be coming out within the week. So sit tight and that will all be able to access on the Bowls Victoria website. So keep an eye out. And I'll be joining you there, but I'll be in a playing capacity, Campbell. <laughs> well, hope, hopefully for my sake you're joining me, but <laughs> for your sake... You want to be time in the green. That's the plan. So Ronnie's nice correction there. Probably Jack High. And during that period, we, we, we have a busy time at Bowls Victoria that time of the year, Campbell. Uh, we have our under 18 state championships at the same time. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of events. The festive season, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we lead straight into Champions Week, which so is where all our region winners come along and obviously play off for a state title. You know, so, so it's endless. So exactly the same. So those under 18s numbers have been tremendous. So it's a really strong <laughs> contingent of under 18 bowlers, um, and there's a lot of them out here today, um, bowling, which is really positive to see. Yes. Um, the numbers are so good, um, and I know Jimmy was either going to release the fixtures yesterday, if not today, um, with the juniors, that we've actually had to create another round or time slot during the event. So, obviously, I've been in your role. I've uh, helped run the event in the past, and I, I have an invested interest as well still because I'm an under-18 state selector. And we're going to have to get some of those events finished five rounds during a day, you know, um, which is... A slog, but the kids just love it. They yep. just kick back out the ground and keep playing if they keep winning, you know, so. It'll be a stamina festival. Who can last longest? <laughs> what, if you if you get a chance to sneak around from the Disability State Championships, the Under-18 camp, what you'll find is that Johnny Smith from wherever might have been knocked out in the first round, but if he, you rock up at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, he's still out there practising with his mates, you know. They just, they never get off the ground. That's it. They love it. The juniors love it. Time on the green, they, no one can get them off. Now, here's our first opportunity, I reckon, here for Ange and Ronnie to potentially double up in terms of getting a couple ends in a row. Um, the margin is still only 10. It's not big in terms of how long to go. You know, we've got seven ends to play. If they can sh string this end and then build on it, they're, they're a half a sniff, I reckon. Just needs the way it looks, no. The line is good again. Just probably a yard a or so short. Again, nobody's really missing their line. Um, it's probably the first end I can recall. Sarah Braybrook <laughs> hasn't got one really, really close. <laughs> She's been bowling unbelievable. There you go. So Sarah's confident with Anne's bowl. Just got to trickle with a bit more pace. Still a little bit short, so it's a great opportunity now for Ange to capitalise. Hopefully that can margin get to three shots or just put a bit more pressure on um, Anne for her next bowl after. If she can get a close one, even though the others are, are not super close, it puts scoreboard pressure on their camp, you know. Correct. So um, her speed is definitely better. She's got to navigate through there. Funny enough... Those bowls may be counting. Um, again, <laughs> to those that watching at home, there's probably a bit of room there, but it could be four shots at the moment, which means that Ian is still going to have to play a very good bowl here. And what she has done well during this game is she has corrected when she's needed to. As you just said, on cue. 
Definitely reduced. Yeah. Back to one by looks of things according to Ronnie. Welcome to Rob, watching from Hobart this morning. Thanks for joining in to the Henselite Victoria Open. Definitely got the weight, more weight on this one. She's probably hoping to sort of get to her own bowl and hang around. Still could be in. Sarah's just announced she thinks it's one. Yep. So Anne's got plenty of room between the black bowl and the yellow bowl to get through. Purple bowl. Purple. Oh, well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't worry. I've got a set of yellow and navy blue bowls, but everybody thinks I'm a Richmond supporter because they look yellow and black, and I have to quite quickly correct them that I ain't no Richmond supporter. <laughs> well, that's uh, unlucky. Too much success going on at the moment at that football club. <laughs> One to Ronnie and Ange. Takes the score down to 14-5. We've played nine... Played nine ends. Yeah. I haven't updated the... Going to be playing the 10th now. No, no, sorry, that is right. We've played... Confused myself then, Campbell. <laughs> I'm correcting myself. They have started down this end, so they're, they're now going to be playing the ninth end. So, looking at the scorecard, they both won four ends each. It's just the number of shots they've won on the end has really been the factor of this game. Yep. So, by all means, they're definitely in it. It's just they've got to start getting multiples. Morning, Paul. Speed of the green. Oh, look... I'm figuring it's around f between 14 and 15. That's what I've been told by the players. I haven't managed to put a bowl down myself yet. I'm probably going to do that later today once our, the sectional play is finished. But, yeah, I reckon between 14 and 15 seconds the green is. Seems very true, very kind. Do a score update across the green. Far rink, Smythe is playing Neville. Uh, Neville is currently leading 10-4 after eight. On the next rink, Cheney is playing Gallo. Cheney is leading 10-4 after five. Uh, the next rink, Edwards is playing Tyres. Edwards is leading 6-4 after six. Uh, we have Truon playing Potter. Truon is leading 11-6 after eight ends. And Harris playing Pierce with Harris leading 12-3 after eight ends. So Sarah's first delivery. Smack on. Wow. And then Ronnie's replied fantastically. Sat the bow and pretty much sat right in front of the jack. I was going to say, from Sarah's previous hand, she didn't have much at the, at the jack, which she previously done. She bounced back quickly. So let's see how her second bowl is looking. She's not far away. She's probably going to be a fraction quick, but I don't mind that. She's not given a bowl a chance. Ball. Passing far behind is good because the jack can probably only go backwards at this point in time. It's a funny game, though. Oh, look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, 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 you know, the, the old saying is, you know, short bowls very rarely get shot. Um, don't get me wrong. I've seen a number of times where the jack might come full for whatever reason, bounces off a bowl, bounces off the bank, you know, but um, speak. What? Do, there we go. And then, hence our theory about you know back bowls are generally uh, not They're a bad thing. Live. You know, so Ronnie's a little stiff. She'd be probably unhappy. Um, she wasn't trying to do that, and, and you know she's probably half a bowl away from being a really, really good bowl in a good spot. Sarah's following her bowl down. She's looking, she's looking close. really positive here. Oh, that's a tremendous bowl. So three really good bowls from Sarah again. As a lead, starting doing, really doing well. Doing a job. Doing just a job. Doing a job. Yep. There's still chances for Angie. If she comes down and just arrive, she can actually squeeze the jack out to uh, the right as we look at the screen here. And it would actually probably 
give them a shot. Uh, it gives her chances, you know. And she happens to be tighter again. She can actually shimmy off the first ball and straighten up to it. So there's chances there. Alright, the first part's right in terms of getting there. It's now just on the line now. She's only a couple bowls wide. She's actually not that far away at all. <laughs> Mick Hollingworth is watching. Mick is from uh, my club, Murray Downs. My second. Yes, there you go. Pennant. I carry him all year. <laughs> That's what you say with everyone when you play with, <laughs> no? <laughs> Could be a different story today. He's my mate, and uh, I'm always hanging it on him, and he gives it back. Don't you worry. <laughs> He's not long back from Fiji. He spent a week in Fiji. Oh, I would, I would love to be in Fiji right now. <laughs> I feel the weather's a bit better in Fiji than what it is out here at the moment. We're lucky we're inside in this amazing complex, but the, the ones outside, I'm just looking. There's no jumpers on, so it must be all right. Yeah, no jumpers, which is, yes, you are correct. Um, blue skies, in a way, couple in the distance, but not much. But first time at these facilities are just incredible. Sarah, uh, Sarah, Anne is not far away here. So what I will say about that bowl is it's probably made it harder for Ange. What, what would you reckon the best shot selection would be right now? <sighs> well, the way the heads line up, you could actually play with a lot of weight and maybe get the split and get something movement. But the, I'm just watching Ronnie here, and she's probably advising Ange to play more of a draw shot, try and get as close as she can. The danger was, though, if she played weight and got the misconnection, she could have taken her closest bowl out. So it's probably not the best. It's actually a really good call. Oh. She's stiff there. Unfortunately, she's probably added one more, so it's probably two now. Yeah. So Campbell, Anne could look at this and go, right, happy with the two. Or she, if she plays her forehand and plays it tight under the head, she could actually roll the white out and make four, five, or six here. Uh, it just depends on how adventurous she is. They do have the lead, so they're not searching for shots, which is the positive. But what it would do, though, is it actually probably nearly rule out the comeback. Yep, for sure. It's not a dangerous shot, and that's probably why I reckon she would play it. I reckon she's her trajectory is not bad. She's looking. It's coming now. It's coming now. Oh, she won far away, Andraffen. Wow. Three. So she's added another one to the into the count. Stops that two end momentum that Ronnie and Ange Hackett had had. Again, they're winning in, they're winning ends but in multiples. It's not the singles, which is been Hackett's um downfall at the moment, just reducing. He's a an old coach of mine. I played at uh, Geelong West for one year many, many, many years ago. Nathan Bush, good mate of mine. And he had this rule of thumb when we used to go out and have our team meetings regarding pennant was drop the ones, get the twos. You know, and so if you can you know, reiterate that second shot is gold mantra. Um, if you can go out and get second shot, you're never going to drop numbers. And then when you get an opportunity, you try and take them, you know. So um, as I said, Ange and Ronnie haven't been that far away, but unfortunately they've probably just dropped a couple of numbers they wouldn't have wanted to do. Correct. As you just said, as you referred, Anne and Sarah have just capitalised on those threes and fours once they've lost two ends in a row. So they've really been strategic in stepping up when required. Great start there from Ronnie. Ronnie it is. Ronnie. Well, it's Ronnie. It is her right name, but 
Hi. You didn't hear maybe the start, but I met Ronnie and a partner, Gareth, at the Sembreros last night. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I walked in in my BV hoodie. And there they were, wearing the, the Thornbury Bowls hood, uh, um, beanies, which I thought looked fantastic. And, uh, yeah, she, she introduced herself, and it was great. You know, and I thought, this is brilliant. I get to commentate you next thing in the morning, you know, so. There you go. What was the order? <laughs> I, uh, I love a burrito, you know, so um, I've always been a fan of Zambreros. Yeah. Could be controversial then, Zambreros over the other options. Well... <laughs> when I first came across them, there was only that Mexican place in Shepparton when I lived okay. there, you know, so that's how I f fell in love with it, you know. There so. you go. Two great Leeds bowls there. I should get a you know, sponsorship or plug for being able to drop <laughs> them into the commentary this morning, Campbell. That's it. Gone having multiple... <laughs> <laughs> The margin is 12. Um, with sort of six ends to play. It's, it's still manageable. They're just going to have to... It's getting to the point where they can't drop as many ends now. It's, it's, and if they do, it's definitely only singles. For sure. So they're currently holding two at the moment. They do... Ronnie, they sh I think they need something behind the head. There's three of Sarah's bowls just for a bit of cover, do you reckon? Well, the problem is, again, you're chasing behind so you probably uh, look uh, it is a really good finish and this is what she's done she's actually put one behind and kind of split the bowls up a little bit but um when when you're 12 down some, shots. You, you sometimes yeah. got to take the risk of, and hope they don't get it you know and sometimes that inadverted scoreboard pressure that might build might might occur you know so so would you say that was a bit of a defensive shot then going behind oh not necessarily um because the idea i reckon with it was if if Ronnie actually happened to get the jack herself and just turned it around the corner, it takes the danger away. Sometimes you can play two shots in one yeah. and, and, and uh, you know, get what you're after. You just don't know. Like, at this stage, Sarah and, and Anne have all put their bowls a yard or so behind and they might keep looking to get it there and give an opportunity for Ange and Ronnie here, you know, so. Just looking at Ange's bowl it's here. It's a little bit short. Yeah. It's... What it might have done, though, is that Anne's actually playing her backhand and potentially might get in her eye a little bit or could actually build that line for her, you know, so we'll find, soon find out in a second. Oh, she's just under it, which means she might be reasonably close. Ooh. So it's probably still two, but it's probably better shaped now for Ange and Ronnie. Less target. I'm probably using terminology. <laughs> Still, I'm s I, have, I did play a little bit, yeah. so I do know a little bit, but we'll get there. I'm old Campbell, been playing a long time, you know. It's Ian's last bowl this end. So she's two down, looking to change it up. She's pointed all right. It's now on the speed. Still just hanging a bit now. Yeah, it was just her speed that held yeah. it out. Yep. So th this is a really good opportunity now. Really op good opportunity for Ange to capitalise. They're holding two at the moment. Is there a way that they can promote their white one as well or just get the three? I think, well, she's changing for starters so that if she happens to be wide with the right weight, she's going to promote her own. And then if she plays a good weight, she'll draw it in there. So good call. Pass looking really good yeah, here. Yeah, just a matter of how much she gives it a shunt. Yeah, that's made three for sure. Yep. Brilliant balls. There we go. So that's what they needed. Hackett and Richards finally can get multiples. The margin is back to nine with five ends to play. So you'd think this end is really important for them to get another multiple. 
Um, you'd think if they lose this one, what do you reckon? Am I calling it early? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, if you're a betting man and playing percentages, you'd probably still favour Sarah and Dan, but uh, you just never know in this sport. Um, I know our, our one of our board members yesterday, Gussie. Yes. He was in a match in the very first game in the morning, and he was 11-2 down. Oh. And uh, as they were playing the last 10, they were actually four up. So that game swung significantly. Morning, Benny Fletcher. How is Stan Hope at the moment? Um, no, I don't think the backhand is tricky. Um, there's just... Uh, I think there was an element of... You didn't get your line and wait right, you miss, you know. So, um, oh, from my perspective, sitting here on the sidelines, and it is always sitting easier when you're on the sidelines, that um, the green looks quite kind. You can play really good bowls on it. So, Ronnie, that was a very good adjustment from her first delivery. Yep. So, currently holding second shots. Sarah's just been on top of it all day. She's been very consistent. That's what a skip would be wanting. Absolutely. Um. Looks to have a, quite a bit of pace on this one here. Yeah, but she's not far from the jack. Ooh, just missed. Don't mind that in terms of the schemes of the match, giving it a chance. Sarah's playing a third. She just give it a bit of a shake then, so she doesn't like it. Just a bit short. But all in all, she's been super consistent, as we mentioned earlier. So it's a great opportunity now for Ange. I'd say come on the forehand side. Plenty of room to draw a and get shot here. So that's exactly what the shot selection she's taken. I think she could be a little bit tight. Yeah, she's going to cut just under. Sarah is giving this every chance from Anne's bowl, and it looks like this is going to be another one in the count. Yeah, I, I reckon Ange has to be a bit more positive here with the way the head's shaping. To me, it's a widish target. Where, you know, you've got chances to land things. Saying that, she's nearly so played really super draw weight and not far away. So, and shouldn't, and sorry, no. and shouldn't change anything no, here. No, danger here. She arrives, she turns one of her own over, she just passes, gets to the jack, she can add. But do you reckon if they make a bit of a... Well, the last thing she'd want to do is make another bowl wider target to make, make it target. easier for Ange, yes. you know, but... Um, and that's no change. But has the line, she could be a little bit of a blocker. Yeah. And see, Ange is looking to hit it. Play backhand with a, you know, a bit of positivity here. 
potentially. So they do have that back bowl as a cover. Yep. So what do you reckon the tactics they're trying to decide how to get points or just to get the shot or again I think shot for starters is the first point I don't, you know particularly when you're two or three down at the head unless you've got an, an obvious shot to make for you know a number um, it's probably about the, what's the best way of getting shot here you know um, so definitely it should most likely be a backhand well delivery. the they were discussing it. They did indicate that at one stage, but I'm just looking at where Ronnie's standing here and I'm, whether it's whether she's asking her to draw there on the forehand or switch it over in the backhand, and that's the weight she should be playing. So as we, she lines up in, she's playing forehand. forehand. So she's just asking her to draw to her foot there. I don't think she likes it out of the hand, unfortunately. Oh, she's just walked away straight away. Hands on the head. And be looking at yard in the last, try and get in the count. She can tip hers over, there's no danger there. And pretty much that's what she's done. Terrific bowling. Three or four, Campbell. S story of the game, isn't it? Unfortunately. Well, fortunately for them and unfortunately for the opposition. <laughs> well, it's definitely three. And, I and they're going to measure for four. Yep. So that's basically been what they've been getting <laughs> every every hand that the, every end that they've won. It's been a four or three. Four it is. Four shots. It nullifies the three they lost last end. It's they know how to bounce back. S Played eleven ends and it's now twenty one eight. You'd think yeah. We have been saying this for the last few ends now, but they really gotta get a handful. <laughs> <laughs> it's a handful nearly every end from this stage now, unfortunately for them. But as it gains twenty one eight, the scoreboard just hasn't reflected. I don't think so either. It's been you'd it could be dead even. We but will we will give some score updates across the green. Uh, Neville playing Smythe. Neville's leading ten six on ten. Uh, Cheney playing Gallo. Cheney's leading fourteen four on nine. Edwards playing Tyres. Edwards is ten seven up after ten. Truan Potter is 16-6 after 11. And as we're doing this, the, the ladies have called an umpire just to measure the jack length for this end to see whether it's 21 metres or not. And Harris is playing Pierce, and Harris is leading 14-4 after 10 ends. So well, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is definitely 21 metres. Oh, minus oh. one to Josh in the uh, commentator Here scoreboard. Wouldn't be taking your tips <laughs> if I was a betting man. <laughs> I didn't think of it. It didn't look that short from where I was sitting, so. <laughs> As Brad, the technician, whips up that uh, little commentator battle thing, and he's made me minus one. Thank you. You just pointed about the scores around the ground. There are... There's one close game. I think the Smythe one's just picked up a two, so that will get them to 8-10. Very observant of you, and the Smythe rink actually has one of our very own. Correct. Our commercial marketing manager, Mal. So that's why I'm paying a little bit of attention <laughs> to that far end on rink one. She's the one with the remote, just changing that now. There we go. So it's 8-10, so they've had a comeback out there as well. Who had a fantastic uh, event at the triples, got down to the quarterfinals. It's great to see Mel do so well with her teammates. Benny, I'm not out of money. Uh, I've been probably more on the on the, on the the pulse today than most of the things I've made uh, my little, you know, assessments on. But every now and then, by going out of limb, you, you get one run, run wrong every now and then. Just ask Tony. He got everything wrong this morning when we were commentating with each other. <laughs> So 
So this is a very good start from Ron. Yeah, fantastic leading. There we go, and a toucher as well. <laughs> Jeff Briggs, don't use my money, Joshua Thornton. <laughs> I know Briggsy quite well, Bendigo Bowls Club. I'm on the same page as you as well, Jeff. <laughs> Sarah looking for a nice correction here. She's edging closer, just short. So they're holding one, so let's see if let's see if Ronnie's second bowl can cause a bit of damage. It's a really nice trail, just the weight. I like that though. It's a chance to sit around, turn the jack herself. As long as it stays on, which it has, it's, it's, it's still a chance to come into the game. And as it's sectional play compared to knockouts yesterday with the triples we did, Campbell, uh, sectional play, all 15 ends will be played because uh, as it may turn out, the shots might be required later in the day depending on... Uh, results of the other two games in sectional play. So, whereas in uh, knockout, generally what happens is that if you get to a stage of the match where it's mathematically Mathemat impossible yep. for the other team to win, you normally shake hands and say thank you and let's have a, a drink and <laughs> move on. For some, they'd want to get, they'd want to be finished quickly then. For that, that case, get to the bar. <laughs> when a facility like this, it's probably a good place to have a, a, a quiet drink. I know I'll be up on the mezzanine later on <laughs> watching some games. Now, I'm going to poke my head up there as well, too. You can't see it from the angle we have at the moment, um, but there is a um, really good area above the green that um, if you want to watch some good bowls and, and enjoy the ambience of the Trirogan Bowling Club, uh, that would be the place to take it from. There's a few people up there just... I the think they're having coffees at this stage. So coffees. Campbell's coffees at this stage sure of the it's day. Only, it's, I'm sure it's 12 o'clock somewhere in the world. <laughs> And has played a really good bowl here, and she has sat the Ronnie bowl for a shot, at least. I think Angie will be playing something similar, trying to find the same gaps. It's marginally wide. I think her speed was good. So what's the plan for the rest of the day for you, Campbell? Obviously, in your participation role, is there anything from that note that you're doing? Or is it more just hanging around being a bit of a support member for us guys here? I think so, yeah. Yep. A few events on as we... There's currently a couple of events on now in yep. the next few few days. So just finalising that. But other than that, um, yeah, hopefully do another game later well, on. We'll definitely get you in. It's, whilst commentating is very enjoyable and is a good part of the role... Sometimes you need that little chop out and someone else to come in and have a chat with you, you know, so. And awfully close, just short. So Sarah's just told... Um, the one role I don't want is Brad's role. <laughs> <laughs> Our technician. He left me in, in the lurch yesterday. He had to run off for a comfort stop. And he tried to give me the paddles, which he's trying to do now. <laughs> and he, Tony's trying to talk to me and I'm trying to hit the camera buttons. And... I think I can multitask in most circumstances, but something I've never done before is Ian has played a really good bowl. Um, no, he threw me under the bus, let's face it. <laughs> so how'd you go under that, though, under the pressure? Oh, I think I, you know, look at me here. I was tapping away, you know. <laughs> we're not, we're not going to do it, Brad. I'm not touching the panel. <laughs> <laughs> so, Andrew, with one ball to go, um, you'd think, what way, forehand or backhand side? Um, She's going backhand. The backhand. I still think there's a, there's, a, there's a funnel there where she can get to her own, roll it over once, Sit or just on. pass, you know. It's just a matter of getting the line right now. Yes. Yeah, again, caught it very early from her, her release. She wasn't happy with the bowl, so that's one shot again to Braybrook and Draffen. 
Scores now 22 8. We've played 12, so we've got three ends to go. Good morning. I hope I pronounce your name right. Uh, I'm going to say Giora or Giora. Definitely pronounce your last name, Pomerantz. That's that's what it is. Um, now, so Sarah Braybrook is on the mat. Is using Green Master Premiers. They're purple. The other lead, Ronnie Richards, is using Dreamline XG. They're white. Um, Ange Hackett, the skipper of Ronnie Richards in the uh, Trelogan uniform, is using white Evolves. There are Evolves. And Anne Draffen, who's the opposing skip, um, the skipper of uh, Sarah, who just played that great pole, is using yellow arrows herself. Sarah bowling this way has just been consistent and basically on the jack every, every time. So it's definitely her strength bowling this way. When do you reckon they're going to have a name for the grandstand or the mezzanine? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, you can name it after a member who helped get, you know, this facility like the way it is. Um, maybe someone from the club goes on and wins a state or national title yeah. or something like that. You know, um, I don't know. Or it just might be... The mezzanine. Open to advertising, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and making money that way. So two terrific bowls so far from Sarah. She's been on top of it all day, putting that pressure on. And if anybody that's watching at home on our Facebook Live here, if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments. We try to get to everyone. Even if you're saying hello, we'll say hello back. Last game yesterday, got a couple more mates online trying to be cheeky, and my brother as well. <laughs> always entertaining sometimes. Bit of amusement. But oh, my brother tends to always get on and tries to be smart when I'm <laughs> commentating Gamble. And then, because he's got no right to reply, really, I can just throw him under the bus very quickly. <laughs> Speed was good then from running. One thing Ian won't be trying to do is fatten the target anymore. Sarah's got two really good bowls. Um, she'll be looking to count, but probably counting without creating that target, I reckon. And, and probably the other thing is passing, which she's done, you know. So, yeah, Benny, I, I, um, I actually don't know <laughs> who I'm playing the singles. All I know I'm doing is going to Merbu North. Um, so it'd be great. It'd be great to go out and visit one of the smaller clubs in the area. Um, learn a little bit more about the area, because I've only ever really been down here once before, so um, this is what the event's really great, as Ange has played a really good bowl. She's probably two down still, but... So you never bowled at these... Played here before. Played have here. played at Trogan. Yep. It's the only time I've ever been down this way. In the indoor? It wasn't indoor then, Campbell. It wasn't? Five no. years ago. Wow, okay. Yep. Um, so I don't know who I'm playing. Uh, I, I kind of keep it that way generally. Um, just go out and play against who you play and try and do your best and see how you go. So when you do know who you're playing, do you do a bit of background? Do yeah, you do a bit of research? Sometimes I do, yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's um, important to know you're up against. Well, again, the reality is you can only control what you can do. So that's, that's you know, if that's why I don't overthink it too much personally. So, um, morning, Sandra Wallace. Great friend of mine from Shepparton and Days. I used to live just around the corner from Sandra. And Marika has asked the question, so the three games they are playing in sectionals, are they alternating from indoor to grass? They generally do, Marika. Um, before every game, there is a two-end roll-up. So if they've played inside and they go outside, they have the opportunity to have that two-end roll-up. So um, there's no disadvantage. 
generally sections stay next to each other too, so that um, you know one person, ha one team hasn't played on the grass the game before, and the other ones have played on carpet, you know, and vice versa. So um, I'm pretty sure if I go to my phone as I'm t chatting here and have a look at this section that I was looking at. I reckon they're probably the team that they're playing against in this section is on this green as well too. So that's two shots there for Draffin and Braybrook. It's actually crazy that they haven't... Oh no, I'll take that back. They did get a one last end. I was going to say it's all been multiples. Yeah, the score is now 24-8. We've got two to play. Got a couple more questions. Is there still going to be a Vic medal for the most consistent performer of the event? No, that is definitely still occurring. Um, the revamp might be who the medal is actually going to be named after now. Um, and it's going to be named after the one and only Barbara Gilbert, who used to basically got this event off the ground. So it's fantastic to see Barb recognised. Um, we had an announcement regarding that recently. Pretty sure we did. I hope I'm not dropping <laughs> let the cat <laughs> any, out of the bag, but I'm, hints. I'm, uh, I am 99.99% confident we've already announced that, and that's fantastic to see Barb recognised for all the work she has done with this event. And Benny Fletcher has asked me, do I like the new format? I just think uh, change is good sometimes, Ben, and uh, the great thing is that this particular area and the, and, the, and the host clubs have got on board to, to wanting to host the Vic Open down this way. Definitely and, uh, embraced it. Yes, and it's been fantastic so far. So as Ronnie... Richards has played a great Leeds bowl there. And it's an easy drive as well, getting down here. Well, for those who don't know, I live in Swan Hill, so I live in the northwest of the state, and uh, I left home on Sunday morning. And um, it wasn't that hard of a drive. Once I got past sort of Bendigo and got on the Calder, it was freeway the whole way down, bypassed the whole way around, and I got here an hour earlier than I thought I was going to, so no, it wasn't very hard. So whoever's controlling the Bowls Victoria Facebook page has definitely confirmed we have announced that Barb is the medalist. So <laughs> I knew it was. I knew that I had it right. I just wasn't 100% sure we'd actually uh, announced it. <laughs> That's got to be Tony, I reckon, on that page. Good work, Tony. Bet time you come good for the date. Because the only other person to be on that page would be Mel, and that's not her at the moment. Definitely not. As their contest, it's still 9-10. They just haven't, they haven't updated the scoreboard yet on the Smythe and... Did they win the last end? Wasn't paying any no, attention Come on, you there. said you are paying attention, Campbell. It's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing head, this one. Again, look at the, the bowls. They're all <laughs> in a line in a again. Line. Yeah, which, again, I, I think it proves the theory that it's a kind, kind green to play on. And like, that's the widest bowl, and it's only sort of 18 inches off centre, which is still a good bowl, you know. And she played the weight to try and get some sort of connection and change the head up. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, so, what, how, how, what would you recommend? Just to draw it in? They're holding two at the moment. Well, again, I don't reckon Ian to be looking want to, touch to widen the target. You know, widening yeah. the target, sitting something jack high makes it easier for the opposition to, to get hit. shot. Uh, again, probably at this stage of the game, they're not going to lose no. from here. But again... It's all about you, percentage. Well, again, you just don't know how many of those shots later in the day are going to count. Um, Ian and Sarah may, may lose their next game, which means it might come down to shots at the end of the day. So... Um, so so you've got to play out the full 15 ends. Um, every end is important if those shots become crucial. The easiest way to win your section is win all three games. You do that, well, you know you're through. You should be good. Not should, you will be. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an easy shot here for Ange. Instead of the, with the bowls all lined up straight, she's going to have to play a, just a perfectly timed bowl with the right weight and right line. Giving it every chance here. Yeah. 
And we'll get on to Bowls Link after this match finishes and you can check all the results of anybody who are wondering who's playing. You know, if you've got friends and family members down here, club members. Um, I'm going to go and then check how Matty O and Lucas went True, this morning. That is a very important game. I'm wondering who's carrying who there this morning. You'd, you'd, you'd presume Lucas is. Well, I'm just not convinced <laughs> between the two of them, to be honest. <laughs> the way I saw Matty bowl the other day, oh. yeah, I, I think it would be Lucas carrying him. <laughs> and that's saying something, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, Lucas is a very good bowler. The Loves bowls. The smiling assassin. <laughs> Lucas Protopapas, teammate of mine in the uh, last National Disability Championships, playing for Victoria. Ange awfully close here. What sort of... Yeah, fantastic no, bowl. Good. She's made two for sure. Um, that is a terrific bowl by Ange Hackett. Johnny Foots, am I playing in the live stream? Not, 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 uh, not planned to at this stage, as in I'm playing at Merbu North and we don't do any streaming from Merbu. Our streaming uh, venues are both Trelga and Morwell, um, based on the capabilities of those two venues being the two larger clubs, but but he's hoping. So well, yes, look, if I happen that. to if I happen <laughs> to win a few games, and you just never know, you know. No, so, so the answer is he's hoping that's right. the last game. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the ideal game to be live streamed on if you're only going to get one. That's it. And misses there. So again, chances here for Ange and Ronnie to to, to get a score back. Um, Draw positively, get some promotion. Happen to be tight. You could rock the white over onto the purple and maybe make another number. There's nothing nothing negative about this shot for Ange, and she's looking close. Touched out a couple rolls. Could be definitely two. I think th I'm, I'm back in three from here, but let's see how good my eyes are. I was good early. Yes, uh, yes, there you go. Never in doubt. Still on fire with the calling. So, last end to go. It's 24-11 in favour of Draffen and Braybrook. We will give you one last score update before we finish up here this morning in this first live stream game. Uh, Smythe and Neville. Taking over. 12-10. Wow. About to play the last. Saying that, though, Mel is two down at the head on the crossover on this last end. Hang on. What end? They'd be playing 14. They all started that end. Don't know, but she's currently two down. So you're saying there's two more ends to go, after, or one more after don't, this? I, I don't know. I can't okay. tell unless the, the end's not right. Uh, next rink across, Cheney leading Gallo 14-9 after 13. Edwards leading 12-11 over Tyres after 12. Potter and Truon have finished. Truon won 21 to 7 after 15. And Harris is leading Pierce 17 7, playing their last. We'll keep an eye on the, the far rank. As I said, we've got an invested interest with our very own Mel Allen playing. Definitely. I think it's the first time as well they've hit the lead. So, okay, they've just changed their on the 13th. Yeah, end. there we go. They fixed it up. See, on yours, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> This is nearly the longest end we've played. And we've had a little bit of jack movement as well with with that. Sarah has just been on top of it all day. If it's slow, I think she's going to collect the jackie. Yeah, on. fantastic oh. bow. And a good home. I like seeing what I just seen there, Campbell. The bu the the bowl stopped. It didn't just naturally creak in. Some greens will be downhill near the ditch. The fact that that bowl stopped near the edge means if the jack happens to go in the ditch and you need to play a shot where you try and draw as close as possible, you know you can do it. Always a good sign. It's good to know. Ronnie's reasonably close here herself. She's gonna take it. Oh, oh. Jack in the pit. Didn't go straight with this it. This is going to be 
difficult. <laughs> This is now what I was just basically saying, Cam. Wow. You know, now, the ability now is to try and draw a shot as close as you can without falling in. Predicting the future here, JT. <laughs> My nickname is Nostradamus. <laughs> oh, now, now. <laughs> so what would it take to beat the current shot bowl from Sarah? Well, it's so... Like, again, depends on what perspective. If you're doing it from uh, Ronnie and Ange's scenario, they just got to try and draw as close as they can to the edge of the green, to the ditch, and without falling in. And for Hackett just uh, to get a shot, to that, finish, on, finish on a win? Yeah, look, yeah, you might... Look, potentially she could draw all three on the edge and, and count, you know, but um, the luxury or the, the benefit of Anne is that she knows she's got um, Sarah's book there... It's a well, uh, and it is a toucher. So if she wants to jam it in and knock it in sideways, she could do that as well. I know there's one other touch on the green. I've got a feeling it might be Sarah's other purple bowl that's yeah, so on the line. It's above the R. It's above the R if when we swing it around. No, no, no. I'm saying there's another. No. It should be another one on the green that's okay. a toucher because the jacket already moved before then as well. So I think that occurred when I was giving the score updates across the green. So going to the final end with Smith and Neville, it's 12 all. So a decider end on the last one on rink one. Rightio. Uh, Anne and uh, Sarah's probably got a couple here at the moment. Anne's not far away. Just needs to pass the white probably to count. Probably has tipped over enough potentially. <laughs> well, I was asking exactly the same question. How do they get shot? I still think you could draw it, yeah, like and just draw around that purple bowl of Sarah's. It's not an easy shot by any means, but there is chances. Whatever happens here is going to be interesting if shot does occur. Oh, she's gone with pace. Too wide. Three bowls remain to complete this game. And be looking for two feet of weight on a last. Looks like it's in the zone. Oh, what a bowl. The, they've just been bowling out of their brains all day. <laughs> it's been... Every time they've been that little bit down, they've just come back and just gone the extra step. Yeah, look. I'd love to see Ange play a cracking bowl here. Try and get a little bit of uh, confidence back going into that next game. Because you just never know in this game what's going to happen. I said, I reckon there's another touch there. Now, that's maybe what Ange was looking at. <laughs> <laughs> so, we can confirm there is a touch up. Yeah, I knew it was there somewhere. I just didn't know which one it was exactly. See if she can actually execute this. Here she is looking for it. Oh. Oh. If that was the toucher. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, it was her bowl that actually screwed off wow. and went in. So, just misses. One more bowl to come. I like the attempt. I do. Hands bowl coming down here. Last bowl of the match. Probably just a fraction quick. We'll just wait for them to confirm how many it is. Three. Three. 
So the score finishes up 27-11, Campbell. Um, congratulations to uh, Sarah Braybrook and Andrew Affin, who won that game against Ronnie Richards and uh, Ange Hackett. Um, I hope you enjoyed your first stint on the commentary, Campbell. I did, I did. It was... Um it was good. Finally, finally got here, which was great. Um, and the quality of bowls was just exceptional all day. So, Braybrook and Draffin's a really good start for their section. And that concludes round one here at Trelgan of the Henselite Victoria Open. Our next round of live streaming matches will start at 12:30. Uh, make sure you stay uh, following Facebook and following the Bowls Victoria page to see that live stream. And uh, thank you all for joining in this morning. to experience the wonder of Gippsland's West. Amongst the rolling hills of Mount Borbor, discover a tranquil green wonderland where spectacular forest waterfalls flow under mountain ash canopies. Explore historic fern-lined townships dotted amongst vast rolling farmlands. Enjoy artisan wineries and providors selling locally grown delights and the best that Borbor has to offer. Gippsland, all kinds of wonder. Anyone thinking about getting a roof, your whole system will change. Right down to social bowls and pennant. At a board meeting this week and approved 22 new players. They really have been perfect all the way through this build and they've looked after us really well.